This videotape, servicing and troubleshooting source 665 1997 dishwashers, is designed to accompany the Sears Service Manual, part number 2212797 of the same title. To determine the model number you will be working on, look for the model serial number plate on the right side of the dishwasher tub, just inside the door. These model numbers apply to all dishwashers introduced in 1997. The last three digits, 790, in the model number indicate the 1997 model year. This videotape and the accompanying service manual are divided into four sections. Section 1 will cover servicing and troubleshooting dishwashers with soil settler and telescoping tower. Section 2 will cover servicing and troubleshooting dishwashers with ultra wash modules and tower water feed. Section 3 will cover servicing and troubleshooting dishwashers with ultra wash modules and internal water feed. Section 4 will cover special installation considerations for decorative panels and the anti tip floor mounting kit. Model 17425790 is the only dishwasher in the 1997 lineup with the soil settler and telescoping tower to deliver water to the upper dish rack. This model is also one of two portable units in the line. This model is equipped with a soil settler. Some of the water with food soil will pass over the soil settler. Since the area above the soil settler funnel is located in an area relatively free of water turbulence, the food, which is heavier than the water, will fall through the opening in the funnel and accumulate in the collector of the soil settler. The food particles will continue to collect as long as the dishwasher is in the wash mode. When the motor goes into the drain mode, water is pumped into the bottom port on the bottom of the collector. This causes the ball in the collector to be blown up against the opening in the bottom of the funnel. The water will then flow out of the collector from the tap port and into the drain line carrying the food particles it collected during the wash cycle with it. Let's see that again in slow motion. When the pump stops running, the ball will again settle in the bottom of the collector. Disconnect the dishwasher from the household electrical supply before attempting any service or repairs. Failure to do so can result in death or electrical shock. Access to many of the components under the tub will require working both inside the tub and from the bottom of the dishwasher. The lower spray arm assembly can be removed from the dishwasher after the lower dish rack has been removed. Use an adjustable slip nut wrench and loosen the pump outlet nut. Remove the spray arm assembly and the grommet washer. To remove the pump and motor assembly, lay the dishwasher on its back. Disconnect the wiring harness. Remove the motor support nut and the motor support. Disconnect the drain hose from the pump and the hose from the soil settler. The pump and motor assembly can now be removed from the bottom of the dishwasher. The motor is secured to the pump assembly with three T20 Torx screws. The impeller can be accessed by removing the disc mount assembly with an adjustable slip nut wrench and pulling the impeller from its position inside the pump assembly. The drain valve can be accessed by removing the four T20 Torx screws securing the drain outlet cover. From this point, the drain cover seal, diaphragm ring, and diaphragm can be removed. The pump outlet grommet can be removed from the tub from either underneath or inside the tub. The soil settler assembly is located next to the pump inlet hose on the bottom of the tub. It can be accessed by removing the four retaining screws and removing the assembly. The funnel, funnel grate, ball, and collector can be easily removed. 
To remove the heater element, remove the wire connectors from the heater terminals under the dishwasher. Unscrew the two heater element nuts. The water inlet valve can be removed by removing the inlet hose and water supply hose and removing the screw securing the valve assembly to the dishwasher frame. The thermal fuse is secured to the bottom of the tub by one screw. The float switch can be removed by removing the float switch housing retaining screw and carefully removing the float switch assembly from the housing. The check valve can be replaced by removing the hoses and removing the hex head retaining screw. The motor relay can be replaced by removing the three wire connectors and the retaining screw. To access the components in the door and console areas, unhook the door springs from the bottom frame rail first. Now, remove the eight T15 torque screw securing the door frame and console to the inner door. Next, remove the console cover by prying the tabs at each end of the cover with a flat bladed screwdriver. Three screws secure the timer to the console. When the timer is reinstalled, be sure the cam follower is positioned inside the cam's groove properly. The door latch assembly can be lifted from the console. The switches in the assembly can be removed by pushing on the two pins securing them into the handle assembly. To begin servicing the dispenser assembly, remove the drip cover. Remove the drawbar spring. Slide the lower dispenser drawbar down as far as it will go to release it from the locking tabs. Remove the upper and lower drawbars. Remove the rinse aid dispenser cap. Use a three-quarter inch socket or the pump centering tool to disengage the dispenser locking tabs from the inner door panel. The detergent door actuator assembly can be removed by prying the bottom tab with a screwdriver and pivoting the assembly up and off. When reinstalling the actuator assembly, be sure that the latch is positioned properly at the top and bottom to ensure proper operation of the detergent dispenser. Reinstall the actuator spring. Turn the timer one complete revolution to make sure the dispenser assembly does not bind up and then replace the drip cover. See section one of the service manual for complete technical information including wiring diagrams, strip circuits, troubleshooting guides, and diagnostic procedures for these models. This is the end of section one dishwashers with soil settler and telescoping tower. Stop the tape and review section one of the service manual at this time. Models covered in this section feature the ultra wash pump and motor module and a stationary tower to deliver water to the upper spray arm. One portable dishwasher is included in these models. Some models will have push buttons while others will have tap touch buttons. All models have mechanical timers. Ultra wash pump and motor modules provide superior cleaning and soil handling in one self-contained assembly. Once the tub is filled with hot water, the motor begins to rotate, forcing the water up through the pump chamber and out through the spray arms. Two spray jets on the underside of the lower spray arm direct water down onto the fine mesh screen of the pump housing to clear soils that may collect there during the wash cycle. Water is prevented from entering the drain system by two check balls in the drain sump. As water and soils return to the lower pump area, the chopper blade grinds the particles into smaller sizes that then pass through the perforated plate into the upper chamber of the pump. The pump impeller causes the soil-laden water to be lifted and moved to the outer edges of the pump chamber, where they are forced into the separator. Clean water is then forced up through the spray arms and fine mesh screen. When the drain cycle begins, the drive motor changes direction. This relieves the pressure on the two check balls opening the drain system. Water is pumped from the tub carrying soils from the separator into the drain sump of the pump. Soiled water is pumped out of the dishwasher through the check valve and drain hose.
Disconnect the dishwasher from the household electrical supply before attempting any service or repairs. Failure to do so can result in death or electrical shock. The heating element on ultra wash models is secured to the tub at the rear of the unit. Access to the wire terminals and securing nuts is best accomplished by removing the dishwasher from its built-in position and laying the unit on its back. Begin by removing the lower dish rack from the dishwasher and removing the lower spray arm by unscrewing the nozzle cap and lifting the spray arm from inside the unit. Turn off electrical supply to dishwasher. Disconnect electrical supply wires. Turn off water supply and disconnect water supply line from water supply valve. Disconnect drain hose from the dishwasher. Remove countertop retaining screws or floor mounting bracket. Now pull the unit from its built-in position and carefully lay it on its back. Pull the wire lead spade connectors from the heater element terminals. Use an adjustable wrench and remove the long plastic nuts securing the heating element to the tub. Stand the unit up and open the dishwasher door. Carefully remove the heating element from the two metal clips and lift the heating element terminals through the holes at the rear of the tub. When installing a new element, check to make sure the grommets are seated properly in the tub and the heating element is properly secured to the retaining clips. Reinstall the long plastic nuts to secure the heating element to the tub. Tighten them securely with an adjustable wrench. Reconnect the wire leads to the heating element terminals. Return the dishwasher to its installed position. Access to the ultra wash pump and motor module will require working both inside the tub and from the bottom of the dishwasher. Begin by removing the lower spray arm by unscrewing the nozzle cap and lifting the spray arm up and off the pump. Now, from underneath the tub, turn the rubber clamp securing the ultra wash assembly to the tub 90 degrees. Remove the check valve from the pump by first removing the drain hose and then unscrewing the check valve from the pump housing. Remove the tuned sound absorber from the motor. Use an open end wrench and unscrew the absorber shaft. The pump and motor module can now be lifted out from inside the dishwasher tub. The operating thermostat on ultra wash modules is secured to the bottom of the lower pump housing with two torque screws. Complete instructions on servicing the ultra wash dishwasher pump and motor module are available in a Take 5 video entitled Ultra Wash 96 Dishwasher Pump and Motor Assembly Service Procedures. Components inside the dishwasher door can be accessed by removing either the outer or inner door panels. To remove the outer door panel, begin by removing the lower access panel. Next, remove the two screws that secure the bottom of the outer door panel to the door frame. Pull the bottom of the door panel outward and then slide it down approximately one quarter to one half inch to align the top of the door panel with the slot in the door frame. This will allow the door panel to be lifted away from the door assembly. To remove the inner door panel, begin by removing the eight torque screws securing it to the door frame. Slide the inner door panel back toward the dishwasher to disengage the spring-loaded locking tab from the panel slot. Then lift the panel away from the door. The spring-loaded locking tab is located on the door cross frame just below the console area. The tab slides into a slot on the inside of the inner door panel. When reinstalling the inner door panel, make sure you hear the locking tab snap into the slot. If this does not occur, the holes for the torque screws will not line up properly. The spring-loaded locking tab can be replaced once the inner door panel has been removed. Remove the spring and slide the tab back until the locating tab is in the keyhole of the slide. Then lift the locking tab up. See section two for complete technical information including wiring diagrams, strip circuits, troubleshooting guides, and diagnostic procedures for these models. This is the end of section two, dishwashers with ultra wash module and tower water feed. Stop the tape and review the service manual at this time. Models covered in this section feature the ultra wash pump and motor module. 
and an internal water tube to deliver water to the second and third level spray arms. One model in this group features tap touch controls and a mechanical timer. Three models in this group feature all electronic controls. Procedures for removing the ultra wash pump and motor assembly are the same as those described in section two with the following additional steps. The internal water feed tube must be removed from the pump outlet by first unsnapping the feed tube from the knob securing it to the back of the tub. Pull the securing tabs of the clamp holding the internal water feed tube to the pump outlet nozzle and remove the clamp from the dishwasher. This clamp will be reinstalled when reassembling the dishwasher. Next, rotate the tube to the left to slide the tube from the pump outlet. Finally, pull the upper narrow tube section from the lower section and remove the large tube from the dishwasher. When reinstalling the lower portion of the internal water tube, lubricate the O-ring on the pump outlet with rinse aid before attempting to reassemble the two pieces. Failure to do so could result in damage to the O-ring. Also, make sure the funnel on the end of the horizontal feed tube to the upper spray arm properly engages the nozzle on the vertical feed tube when the dishwasher is reassembled. Models with all electronic controls feature a soil sensor located under the dishwasher tub. This pressure switch is connected to the bottom of the pump housing with a plastic pressure hose. This hose must be removed from the pump housing before the ultra wash module is removed from the dishwasher. For a complete explanation of the theory of operation of the soil sensor feature, see the service manual. All electronic control models have a number of components unique from all other models in the 1997 Kenmore dishwasher line. The vent located in the upper left corner of the door is active in the 1997 model 1595. Access to this vent assembly begins by removing the vent cover located on the inside of the dishwasher door. Use a flat bladed screwdriver and turn the vent cover counterclockwise. Next, remove the inner door panel. A wax motor opens the vent door during the dry cycle and closes the vent door during the wash cycle to retain heat and reduce noise. There are two wire leads to the wax motor. Once these have been disconnected, the vent assembly can be removed from the console panel. The detergent and rinse aid dispensers on all electronic control models are essentially the same as those in all other 1997 Kenmore dishwashers, except the drawbars are activated by two wax motors operated by the control board. The wax motors, the electronic control board, and keypad assembly are located under the console control cover. To gain access to this area, use a flat bladed screwdriver to unsnap the tab securing the inner edge of the cover to the console. Then tilt the cover up and remove it from the console. See section three for complete technical information including wiring diagrams, strip circuits, troubleshooting guides, and diagnostic procedures for these models. This is the end of section three, dishwashers with ultra wash module and internal water feed. Stop the tape and review the service manual at this time. Section four covers two special installation procedures not provided in the installation instructions provided with the dishwasher. Custom decorative panels can be installed on the doors and most access panels in the 1997 Kenmore dishwasher line. A detailed set of instructions is provided in the service manual. A separate floor mounting kit is available for installation situations where it is not possible to secure the front of the dishwasher to the countertop. A detailed set of instructions is provided in the service manual. The bracket hooks over the lower frame rail of the dishwasher and is secured to the floor. This concludes the video presentation of servicing and troubleshooting source 665 1997 Kenmore dishwashers. Review the service manual at this time. Please rewind the tape.